Welcome to the KO Boxing Show. Haven't we got a special treat tonight? None other than Eric the Butterbean Inch. He was a former kickboxing mixed martial arts champion and also had 91 professional boxing bouts. He was also the IBA super heavyweight champion all the way from Alabama. The Butterbean, how are you? Hey, doing great, Peter. It's good to be on the show. Thanks for having me. No, great to have you on. Let's go over your magnificent career because in June 1999, you fought Peter McNeely and he fought Mike Tyson. What was it like to fight Peter McNeely? Actually, it's a pretty easy fight, if you ask me. I mean, I had no problem with him. Oh, nice one, nice one. July 2002, you fought the great Larry Holmes. What was it like being in the ring with a legend, Larry Holmes? And that was over 10 rounds. Because you're normally the four-round specialist. Yeah, Holmes, you know, he was scared. He just run the whole fight. I mean, if he was sit there and tried to fight a little bit, it might have been a little bit more, a little bit more exciting. But he, after he hit me in, like, the second round, I looked at him, I smiled. I go, that's the best you got, Larry. And he run from me the rest of the fight. At 5 foot 11, you were 171 kilo. You kind of had the aura that everyone loved. You were so popular. And... I mean, thinking back, if UFC was such a, a sport as it, as big now as it was back then, you would have been a superstar in the UFC, I'm sure, as well. Well, their their weight limit was was way under what I weighed, so I could never have made the 160-pound weight limit. Oh, okay, okay. Um, let's go over some of the things you do. You're a sheriff as well in, in America, is that right? And you were in a TV reality show. Um, right, I was. Yep. Yeah, called Big Law. So tell us a bit about that. Well, you know, th there was a you know major drug problem where we lived, and I was helping the, the local drug unit trying to get rid of a lot of it, and Discovery found out about it, so they called and asked if they could follow us around. Oh, okay, okay. Gee, that, that must have been a big kind of different outlook for you being involved in that rather than the, uh, the boxing scene. Well, I've been doing it for a couple of years prior to the prior to the show. Oh, okay, okay. Now, your last fight was in 2013. It was against Quirk Lawson, and uh, you had to retire with a shoulder complaint. Vlad, Vlad Warden was a promoter who promoted Costa Zoo, and it was at Newcastle. Is that right? Yeah. What can you remember about Australia? Did you try Vegemite? Did you try a meat pie? Did you try a, a meat pie? Was awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed the food. Did you try Vegemite? Um, I think I did. If I'm not wrong, I believe I did. Did you have a beer? Of course. Yeah. And what was the beer like in Australia? Compared it was to a little darker than I'm used to, but it was still good. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing with yourself now, Butterbean? Because you've got such a massive following around the world. Everyone loves the way you were, They loves the way you fought it. You're like the guy next door rather than this prize fighter because you see prize fighters have got six pack and all that type of stuff. That wasn't you. You were the guy next door. You could have a beer, jump on the scales, and then jump in and, and throw the leather around. What What are you doing now? Well, I'm basically retired. I'm spending time with grandkids and enjoying life. Oh, well, I, you know, I, I touch I touch base with a lot of my fans on TikTok. I got just got a TikTok probably about a month and a half ago. It's Butterbean King of Four Rounds. Wow, we got to so get on that. If you've seen my TikTok, you got to watch. I make some pretty good videos. No, nah, we, we'll keep out for that one. We'll, we'll have a look at Butterbean, you're such a character. You must have many funny stories. Whenever we have a guest on, I always ask them, what's their best funny story? If you were sitting in a bar now and you wanted to make people laugh, what's the best story? Involving the fight game. Well, some of my stories you just gonna have to wait till the book comes out, I guess. Have you got a little teaser? There's got to be a funny story you can just tease us with. You know, a lot when I when I fought Johnny Knoxville, you know, in the movie he he woke up when he woke up. He wanted to know if if I was okay, but what he really wanted to know if it, if it was funny or not because he didn't want to have to do it again. But he was oh. willing to do it again if 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 he had to. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Who were you involved with with box? Who was training you at the time? Did you have much to do with Sean Gibbons? And are there any fighters that you deal with at the moment? Are you still got a hands-on approach? Do you still watch the game? Well, I, I don't pull 
I don't train fighters. I'm, I'm pretty much got out of it. Uh, Murray Sutherland used to train me. You know, he was from Scotland. Uh, tough, tough, tough dude. Okay. Have you got any favorite fighters now? I, I really don't. Watch? Know. The heavyweights impress me. Okay. Now, how close were you to fighting Mike Tyson? Was that just hype or was it going to be real? Did you ever? I don't think, it, you know, they, they didn't want him to fight anybody that could punch. Okay. You know, they, they, I think they were always suspect of Tyson's chin. Uh, they, they Actually, they contacted me after, before the Roy Jones deal. They contacted me to see if I want to do it, but I have such a bad hip and shoulder, I wasn't able to. Okay. Okay. Did you ever meet Mike Tyson? What was he like as a person? No, me and Mike get along really well. We get along awesome. Oh, great, great. So you've made a lot of friends out of boxing. and what? what oh, are you... well, that, yeah, I know Mike really well. I've known Mike back even when I was fighting. We, we got along well. You fought, before you fought in Newcastle, you fought on the Gold Coast. What can you remember about fighting on the Gold Coast in Australia? Did you like the Gold Coast? Because it's a bit I, like Florida. Yeah, I like all Australia. People were friendly. I had a great time there. Okay, okay. So what's the next stage of your life now, now that you're retired? You've got to be... Apart from doing TikTok, what are you still a sheriff? Can you still arrest people, or you still? No, no, I'm, I'm totally like I said, I'm totally retired. I just I'm enjoying life and just just hanging out with my wife and kids and and grandkids and enjoying life right now. Okay, how's America now with this COVID situation? Have you, are you planning to get the vaccine? I'm not getting the vaccine. You're not going mean... to get it. It's out way too soon. I mean, most drugs take 10, 12 years. They don't know what to, they don't know what it's going to do, what it what, what it's going to affect down the line. Yeah. Um, to me, I, the the mask thing. Half the people don't wear the mask correctly, and even if the mask would work, they're using t-shirt material. Please tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about there, but I mean, people people like. They're wearing underwear over their face. Yeah. Gotcha. It's not, I mean, it's, 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 it's almost ridiculous. Yeah. I'm, I'm just guessing here, but I'm, I'm guessing you're a big fan of Donald Trump. Oh, I like Trump, yeah. Yeah, I can just, I can, I can see that. You're, you're the true blue American guy that loves Donald Trump. Is that right? And, you know, there was more people working. I mean, the first thing Biden did when he came in, he cut off all the oil. Yeah. That was the stupid thing he could have done. Yeah, yeah. So you've also, in your TV reality show, you, you must have had some really scary moments. What were some of the scary moments? Being well, I'll sheriff? tell you some funny ones. One of the, one of the, one of the, the, the houses we broke into was a meth house. Yeah. And the whole, the whole house had, you know, bad vapors in it. And we had to, to open the windows to, let, to, to air the house out. But the, the guy had all the windows screwed shut. So we had to break the windows out. So we're breaking all the windows out. There's like a five-year-old kid or four-year-old kid and looks at his mom and goes, Mom, well, why is Butterby knocking our windows out? <laughs> you know, I mean, if somebody's going to do drugs and do stupid shit like that, they, they need their windows knocked out. Yeah, yeah. I think they need to be knocked out as well, Butterby. You might have, if you're still in drugs, you could have laid one of those big right hands on him as well. Oh, I wish I could have. I really would. <laughs> But I've been thanks for your time, my friend. It's been awesome interviewing you and all your Australian fans love you. It'd be great to get you back here. Would you love to come down under once COVID's over? Would love to come back once all over. You mentioned your hip and your knee. Is that okay? Is that through the kickboxing days? Are you, yeah, you the, the right? hip got you know injured, I think, in kickboxing. But, you know, it just takes its toll. You know, when you fight for 20-something years, you're going to have injuries. Yeah. You're such a warrior, Butterbean. Thank you for your time, my friend. Always a pleasure. It. And uh, the Australian fans love you. God bless and take care and we'll talk soon. Have an awesome evening. Thank you.